My dear P6 learners, welcome back to this online teaching. My name is Mr. Mugisha Emmanuel. In my previous lessons, I have been handling ratios and by the end of the last lesson, I had covered the last lesson covering the whole ratios. So it's now up to you to go deep into your textbooks and look for more questions about ratios which will help you to practice more. So, in our new lesson today, we are going to look at proportions. We are going to look at proportions. I know this word may sound new into your ears, but it is not very new. We have been dealing with this. So, we have a law that governs proportions, and it states that when you increase the quantities, even the cost increases. So it means when you reduce the quantity, even the cost will reduce. For example, if I buy one book at 1,000, and this time I want to buy two, what have I done? I have increased the quantity from one to two. So do you think the cost of two books will be less than the cost of one book? Absolutely, no the cost will have to increase. What about if you buy two books, maybe at 4,000, and this time you want to buy one book? Do you think the cost of one book will be higher than the cost of, 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 of two books? Absolutely no. So that's why I have said that when you increase the quantity, even the cost of those quantities will have to increase. And when you decrease the cost, I mean when you decrease the quantity, even the cost will have to decrease. So under proportions, we are going to majorly look at three kinds of proportions. We have what we call direct proportions. Then we shall look at what we call indirect proportions. Which sometimes is called inverse proportions. Then we have the last proportion which is constant proportions. We have three kinds of proportions. We have direct proportions, indirect proportions, which is sometimes called inverse proportions, and then constant proportions. But we can't handle all this in the same lesson. So for today, allow me take you through direct proportions. So we are going to look at direct proportions. And in our examples, example one, the cost of one book is 2,000 shillings. So find the cost of seven similar books. Okay? The cost of one book is 2,000 shillings. Find the cost of seven similar books. So in this case, what we are looking for must appear on our right. So what are we looking for? 
What are we looking for? We are looking for the cost. Okay? So cost has to appear this side. So it means on this side I will have to remain with books. I have said what you are looking for has to appear on your right. And what you have has to appear on your left. So looking at what you have been given, one book costs 2,000 shillings. So if we buy one book, this one will cost you how much? What is the cost of one book? They have told us that it is 2,000 shillings. What about when you buy seven? When you buy seven books, This one will cost you the cost of one book, which is 2,000. Then you multiply it by seven books. Or if you don't mind, you are going to add the cost of one book seven times. But you are P6 children, the simpler way of getting it very fast is by multiplying. Therefore, when you buy seven books, they will cost 2,000 shillings times seven. And what is this one going to give you? Side work. 2,000 multiplied by seven. What do we get? Seven times zero, zero. Seven times zero, zero. Seven times zero, zero. Seven times two, we get 14. And what is that 14? 14 is money. So we shall have 14,000 shillings. We shall have 14,000 shillings. So when you buy one, you pay 2,000. When you buy seven, it will be the cost of one book times seven, which will give you 14,000 shillings. Let's look at another example. The cost of five pens is two thousand five hundred shillings. Find the cost of one pen. Okay. The cost of five pens is 2,000 shillings. Find the cost of one pen. So we are looking for the cost of one pen. We are looking for the cost of one pen. So how shall we get the cost of one pen? You need to identify what we are looking for. What are we looking for? We are looking for the cost. We are looking for the cost. So it means on my right I will have pens. And on my right, I will have their cost. Okay? So, the cost of five pens is that one. So, when you buy five pens, this one will cost you how much? 2,500. Okay? What about when you buy one pen? What about when you buy one pen? When you buy five, you will pay 2,500. What about when you buy one? Are we going to buy it at a price which is more than this? No. So it means to get the cost of one pen, you will get the cost of five pens, you divide it by five in order to get the cost of one. So divide by five, one. When we divide by 5, we shall get 5, then plus the two zeros. So it means one pen costs how much money? 500 shillings. Okay? Yes. This is what you looked at in your previous classes. So, in P6, I am going to make it a little bit harder than this, because you are now old, and you can interpret. 
So in our example number three, I can say the cost of five shirts is 40,000 shillings. Okay? When you buy five, you will pay 40,000 shillings. Find the cost of six similar shirts. Okay? The cost of five shirts is 40,000 shillings. Find the cost of six similar shirts. So what are we looking for? We are looking for the cost. And the cost of how many? Six. So what should appear on our left? What we have. And what do we have? Shirts. Shirts. So we shall have shirts on this side. Then on this side we shall have the cost. Okay? So the cost which has been given is 40,000. But 40,000 for what? For five shirts. So you come and say five shirts cost how much money? 40,000. Okay? Now we want the cost of six. But before you get the cost of six, you need to know if you buy one, how much money will you pay? Therefore, one shirt costs 40,000. How did we get the cost of one shirt? By dividing. So this is the cost of five shirts. So to get the cost of one shirt, we shall divide this one by five. Okay? So divide by five, one. 40 divided by 5, we shall get 8. Then plus the three zeros which are here. So it means when you buy 1, you will pay 8,000. But what about when you buy 6? So come and say 6 shirts will cost the cost of 1. And what is the cost of 1? When we divide it, we got 8. Thousand. Then we multiply by six. This is the cost of one. So to get the cost of six, we multiply by six. And what is this one going to give you? Six times eight, we are going to get 48. Then plus how many zeros? Three zeros. So it means when you buy six shirts, you are going to pay how much? 48,000 shillings. Okay, 48,000 shillings. Let's have another example. Number four. Three kilograms of beans cost how much money? You can guess the current cost of beans. Oh, most of you don't like beans. So, cost... How much? 5,400 shillings. So we are finding the cost of 2 kilograms of the same beans. OK? Three kilograms of beans cost 5,400 shillings. Find the cost of two kilograms of the same beans. So what are we looking for? In this case, we are looking for the cost. And the cost of what? The cost of two kilograms. So we shall begin by saying, on this side we have kilograms, then this side we have the cost, okay? So when you buy three kilograms, 
These ones will cost you how much money? 5,400. So before we get the cost of two, what are we supposed to get first? The cost of one, which we call the unit cost. So to get the cost of one kilogram, this one will cost, this one costs, costs you the cost of three, then you divide it by three, because we want to get the cost of one. Therefore, come and reduce this one. Divide by three, one. Okay? Five, divide it by three. What do we get? We shall get one. But we shall have a remainder. What is the remainder? The remainder is two. Put that two here to make it 24. So when you are dividing, you are now dividing 24, not four. 24 divided by three, we shall get eight. So zero divided by three, zero. Zero divided by three, zero. So it means when you buy one kilogram, you will pay 1,800 shillings. But I want the cost of two. What about if I buy two kilograms? Now these ones will cost you the cost of one. What is the cost of one kilogram? 1,800. Then we multiply it by two. Side work. Okay, we can even use zero concept. Whereby we shall have 18, then we multiply by two, then the answer we shall get, we shall just add on the two zeros which we have. Two times eight. It means you add eight two times. So eight times two, we are getting 16. We regroup with one. So two times one, we are getting two, and plus this one, we are getting three. So it means we have three, six, then plus how many zeros did I leave out? They are two. So this one means that when you buy two, you will pay 3,600 shillings. 3,600 shillings. That will be the cost of two. Okay? Yes. If you have been very keen, I have used one method. But we have always told you that a class that uses one method in mathematics is a dead class. So do we have any other method we can apply here to get the same answers? The answer is yes. So on our example number five, I am going to use an alternative method which is different from this. Then you begin comparing. The two methods, which one is simpler? What we are interested in is to see you passing numbers. So in our example, number five, I am going to use another method on which you can use to answer these questions. So example number five. Example number five, somebody may tell you that seven skirts. Cost. Okay, I don't know the cost of skirts because I don't put on skirts. So seven skirts cost twenty-one thousand shillings. Don't say, oh, the teacher's skirts are very cheap. I don't put on skirts. Seven skirts cost twenty-one thousand shillings. What is is the cost of one dozen of similar skirts. Okay? Seven skirts cost 21,000 shillings. What is the cost of one dozen of similar skirts? Okay? Here you must use the knowledge that you have acquired from the previous classes. Do you know a dozen? If I talk about books, how many items are in a dozen? Okay, my friend is telling me 12. Yes, a dozen has got 
transfer of items. So if we are talking about skirts, and I'm talking about one dozen, it means one dozen has 12 skirts. Okay? It means one dozen has 12 skirts. So it means where we have one dozen, I am supposed to have there 12. Why? Because the cost given is not per dozen, but it is per what? Per skirt. So we have to change the given dozen into number of items. So we have 12 skirts. So in this case, I have been given the cost of seven skirts. So if I was to use this method, I was going to say seven skirts cost 21,000 shillings. So if you want to get the cost of one before you go to a dozen, you will have to divide 21,000 by seven to get the cost of one skirt. Then after getting the cost of one skirt, multiply that cost by 12, of which 12 stands for one dozen. But as I told you, I said I'm going to change the method so that you compare. So in my new method, we are going to use this formula, new out of old, then it times given amount. Okay? We are going to get new out of old times given amount. So, in this case, you are supposed to identify what has been given twice. So, what has been given twice? Is it money or skirts? Is it money or skirts? We have seven skirts and one dozen similar skirts. So what has been given twice are skirts. Seven skirts and one dozen of skirts. That's what has been given twice. So you substitute what has been given twice in this one, new and old. Then what will remain is what, will, what you will put under amount. So, remember from the beginning I told you that what you are looking for will have to appear on your right. So, for this case, what is the cost of one dozen? And we have said one dozen stands for 12 skirts. So, since we are looking for the cost of one dozen, what we are looking for becomes new. So we are looking for the cost of one dozen, which stands for 12. So where we have new, we put here 12, divided by which one is the old number of skirts, or the one which, whose cost has been given, it is 7. So we divide it by 7. So what have we remained with? We have remained with 21,000 shillings. So we come and multiply here by 21. We reduce. Divide by 7, 1. Divide by 7, we are getting 3. So it means we have 12 times the 3, then plus how many zeros? 3 zeros. Okay? Tables. 12 times 3, what do we get? We are getting 36. Then plus how many zeros? 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. You see, this method is also there. But I know many of you have not got this one. That's why I'm going to give you the last example about this method. Then I give you an activity to do. So in our example number five, whereby we shall use the same methods, we are saying... We are saying we are saying the cost the cost of three loaves of bread is 
How much money? 12,000 shillings. So find the cost of five similar types of bread. The cost of three loaves of bread is 12,000 shillings. Find the cost of five similar types of bread. So I have told you that I'm using the last method for people who never got it from the other end to get it. So we are saying new, out of old, times amount. Okay? Identify what has been given twice. We have three and five. So it means money has been given once. So we are looking the cost of what? Is it three or five? Find the cost of five. So we are looking for the cost of five. So the one whose cost we are looking for becomes new. So we shall have new, which is five. Divide it by the old, whose cost has been given three. Then we multiply by the amount of money. That is 12,000 shillings. Divide by 3, 1. Divide by 3, 4. So we shall have 5 times the cost of 1, which is 4,000. And tables, 5 times 4, we are going to get 20. Then plus how many zeros left out here? Three, one, two, three. So we shall have one, two, three. Okay? So it means when you buy five, you would have to pay 20,000 shillings. Now, having given you two methods, I think you have started the judging. Which one is simpler? Is it the first method I gave you or the second method? When I give you an exercise, you are at liberty to use any method which you want. But don't use both of one number. Thank you so much for being good learners. I'm going to give you an activity of uh, five numbers. I expect you to sit down, do the work so well, so that next time when I come, we are able to check ourselves on how we performed in this activity. Bye-bye.